Today we're going to be doing eclairs with a pastry cream and hand angostura cocoa bitters and I do hope you enjoy it. Just for some background information, patty shoe is the same as puffs. In Trinidad we call puffs patty shoe. Um, we usually get it with a savory filling at bakeries and whatnot, but today I'm going to show you the eclair which is going to have the pastry cream infused with the Angostura cocoa bitters. So just to get into it, I'm going to start with the pastry cream because it needs to chill and then whip. And while that is happening, we're then going to bake the, bake the eclairs and it's going to be a whole thing and you're going to enjoy it after. So I'm going to start with the pastry cream. We're going to do our milk and sugar and let that come to a nice gentle boil again. You have to be very careful with this particular part because milk can burn very easily. I'm just going to add this in. And I'm going to add in my sugar here. And I'm going to start to give this a very gentle stir just to help the sugar dissolve. Now you're going to notice I'm using a wooden spoon for this. And it's simply because wooden spoons generally tend to do these particular things a lot better than a stainless steel spoon. In my personal opinion, and it's also what I was taught when I was growing up. Right, so I'm gonna crack my eggs. I need two egg yolks and one whole egg and I'm gonna add that to my sugar and uh, my cornstarch. So I'm gonna add the sugar and the cornstarch together now and then I'm gonna whisk everything together. Right, so I'm a very hands-on individual, so I'm going to do my egg yolks, but I'm going to use my, my hands to do the egg separation. Your hand is a very natural strainer, so get very familiar and accustomed to it. Feel your food, touch your food. And be careful with the shell. The shell can crack your egg yolk and ruin what you're going to do with it. Which will cause it to bleed into your egg whites. While the milk is heating, we're going to whisk these ingredients together. Just to incorporate it and take out any of the lumps that might be in it from the cornstarch. Mm. Every time I make pastry cream, it makes me very nervous because it can go wrong so easily. Eggs can cook without it meaning to be cooked, like scrambled, so just gonna be careful. We're gonna do a little process called tempering, which is just going to add a little bit of the hot milk into our mixture just to get it to the same temperature. And then we're going to add all of this back into our milk mixture and let it come to a thickened kind of pudding consistency. So as you can see, the milk is coming to that lovely boil. I'm just going to turn down the flame because I don't want it to continue bubbling too much. Take my handy cup measure and just take out a little and add it to my egg and milk mixture. This process is simply making this particular mixture the same temperature as what is in the pot so it is not a, a shock to it when it goes back into the pot which is what happens when some people do it even myself when I started out and I cooked all the eggs ruined a perfectly, what would have been a perfectly good pastry cream. The good thing is I can feel the, the heat on the bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna add this now to my milk mixture and I'm gonna be stirring constantly. Adding it all in one grot. I'm stirring constantly just to keep the mixture as smooth as possible as it thickens. 
as you can see it's looking smooth it's not looking at like scrambled egg which is good it's getting thick we're gonna just be here for about a minute or so and then we're gonna take it right off don't worry with any little lumps you see now because it's gonna get whipped just before we put it into our paste our eclairs a good way to know is if it is you take it to the back of your spoon it shouldn't be running it should be just like this thick and staying in place we're gonna pan this in already cheap pan i took the liberty before and i put a little plastic wrap on it so that it wouldn't it'll just be easier in the process i have my handy towel here that is just good for holding the pot and i'm gonna scoop out this mix I have my spatula nearby so that I can use it to spread the mix out. That is just going to help it in the fridge cool down faster without it cooking because there is something called carryover cooking, carryover baking. If it's still hot, it's still cooking. So I have some butter handy here. And that butter is just to help it so that it doesn't get a, a scab as you put it into the fridge. But I'm also going to be putting a little bit of plastic wrap on top. To seal it off, the oil from the butter is going to help it from not getting a scab. And take care with this particular section because you want your plastic wrap to go down with out air bubbles. That is just going to cause steam, which is going to introduce added moisture into your mix, which you really don't want. This is a technique that I learned when I was an intern. One of the best things I ever learned, actually. Something as simple as this. It's going to take about four hours to chill properly, to cool down the way we want it to cool down before we whip it. So I think I did a good job of getting out as much air bubbles as possible and preventing this particular pastry cream from scabbing, which you don't want. It will just cause something hard in it and you want a smooth mix. So I'm going to pop this into the fridge and we're going to move on to the next step. As our pastry cream is chilling, we are going to go ahead and jump into the pate choux part of this. This is very simple. We're going to start off with one cup of water. We're going to add our butter in. So the butter, the water, our salt and sugar, both to taste, all have to come to a boil before we add in our flour. So we're just going to turn up our heat a little bit again to a medium flame. We do want this to come to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down and add our flour. I'm very excited to be sharing this recipe with you. I have been making this since I was in form two. I was quite the entrepreneur. Every morning I would carry my little container full of cheese and chicken puffs to um, get a little extra allowance it was a very nice time in my life been making this this particular recipe since 2002 yeah i mean when i started <clears throat> when i started making puffs my mom was very strict do it by hand do it by hand today we're not going to be doing it by hand we're going to be using our trusty mixer because we're on a time crunch doing it by hand is a lot of elbow grease and Oh, I'm getting older, folks. I don't have I don't have it in me right now. Just gonna give this a little stir here just to help it a little bit. But I really love making this. Every bakery I go to, I keep saying, "Gosh, they just don't make it like me." <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this down now because it's at a lovely boil, and I'm going to add my flour in all at once. And I'm going to use the back of my spoon to bring this together. Back of the spoon. Just to make sure everything is incorporated well. We're going to let this continue cooking on top of the stove in this pot here for another two minutes on a medium flame. My mother calls this the empanada. I do not know why, but 
every time I explain this process to someone, I say the exact same thing, you're gonna get the empanada. And they don't know what I mean, but I mean, this is what my mother told me, so I'm sharing it with you, because mother knows best, right? This is a very trusted recipe. So you're good to go here. So we're gonna take this off the fire now, and we are going to add this to our mixer. So we're gonna add our empanada now to our mixing bowl very quickly. We're gonna add all of it. It's gonna be steaming. I'm going to start adding in my eggs one time. One at a time. And we're gonna let it mix for about two minutes. And as we go, we're gonna be increasing our speed because what makes pate shoe pate shoe is that is the aeration. And this mixing process is gonna help that happen. I'm going to increase a little bit. So what we're looking for as we're coming close to it finishing is a glossy texture. Slightly tacky, but not runny. It, would, it should give you little peaks if you just press your finger against it. When I started this, I used to add my eggs after all the steam and everything had gone, but while in training, I was told that it's a good idea to add it when, it when it's still warm and it actually made a better product. So I'm showing you that here today as well. So this process takes just about 10 minutes. I added in my last egg and as you can see, it is glossy. That's how, that's how we want it. So we're gonna, this is ready to, to finish now. So we're gonna just take off the mixer. So as you can see, it's nice, has a nice sheen to it, like a, so did you put on some good highlighter? And I guess I'm getting a beautiful peak at the tip of my paddle attachment and that's what you want. You don't want a dripping mix. So be very, very careful with this particular part, the eggs, and your eggs need to be very fresh as well. And I had fresh eggs, lovely market eggs and it gave me a beautiful mix so i'm going to bag this up and then we're going to start doing the fun part which is our piping we are ready to put our mix into our piping bag before we do that a lovely trick i learned i cut a piece of plastic wrap and i'm going to add my mix to that because if it is you're using a canvas bag or a feather light bag you, you not necessarily do you want the insides of your bag to have the mix because it makes it's very tacky and it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to clean. So we use a little plastic wrap and this not only works for patty shoot, it works for icings as well. And it's also easier for you to just pull out a particular, your mix. And if it is you need to, you can change your tip, star tip, plain tip and so forth. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. And I'm putting it in the direction I'm going to roll it. Put it, I put it in the center because I want to make sure that the plastic wrap is covering it properly. So we're just going to roll our mix like this and you want to make sure a little bit is tucked in to sort of seal it in. Keep your edges long and you're going to roll it. Roll. I'm going to tuck this part underneath here. Now I'm going to tie off this particular piece. This takes a little work, huh? Take this and I send it down. I have this little tip here. I pull. And then I cut off the little excess. And we are ready to pipe. Right, guys? So we're piping. So I want you to be very aware of where my hands are. I have a hand to the back which is closing off the, the bag and I have a hand here which is squeezing down the mix. We're not going to be putting pressure from here because you're going to end up boosting your bag. I am using a disposable bag simply because it's a little bit easier today. So just pay close attention to how I'm piping. And yes, piping is a skill. It comes with time. Knowing the amount of pressure comes with time. I don't get it perfect either. But every day we do it is a day to practice, right? So we're gonna bake this at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for the first 20 minutes. And for the last 10 minutes, we're gonna do it at 350. This is just to help it dry out a little bit at the end. So 
be very mindful when it is you doing pate choux. For the first 20 minutes, you cannot open your oven. If it is you introduce cold air into the oven, it is going to fall flat. And you want something that has puffed up very nicely. Yeah, so we're going to do that now. While our eclairs are baking, because we, we did quite a batch, our pastry cream set very nicely. So we're going to add it to the bowl, add our Angus or cocoa bitters, and any other little flavoring you may have. It's a nice thick consistency, not too runny. So that means we did a good job. I'm going to add my cocoa bitters. A couple of dashes. And my little essence. I'm going to first fold this in. And then I'm going to whisk it. This is the elbow grease. If ever you needed elbow grease, you need it now. I'd like to mention that pastry cream can taste a little bit eggy for some people. So I like to add something with a little bit of an alcoholic base because it kind of cuts that a little bit. So if it is you are afraid that it's you know, too many eggs, anything with any kind of alcoholic base works perfectly. And so we finish with this part right here. So we're on to the, another fun stage. We're going to be making ganache, which is just heavy cream and I'm using chocolate chips. I'm not using any of the higher grade chocolate. Simple home ingredients. So we're going to start. I'm going to scald the heavy cream and then we're going to add that to our chocolate chips. I'm not doing the double boiler. I'm doing it very simple today. I'm going to add this in. I'm going to let this come to a boil. We, oh, my second batch is almost, is almost here. Let me take care of that. So you can see our cream has some beautiful bubbles going on here. We're going to turn this off now. And we're just going to add some of our cream to our chocolate chips. I'm going to give this a little stir. I'm going to take this opportunity to add my cocoa bitters to this as well. And that is our beautiful ganache, folks. It's very smooth. Just the consistency that we want. So folks, after all our hard work, we have our pâté choux éclairs, our ganache, and our pastry cream in a piping bag. So I'm going to assemble one, and then, and then I'll cut it, and you'll see what everything looks like. I am going to cut from underneath and I'm squeezing, starting from one corner and I'm guiding it. I mean, it's an eclair. It's supposed to be filled with cream. I'm going to take it now and I'm going to dip it in the ganache and any drip right on top here. I have my cocoa nibs ready because I think it'll add a lovely contrast with the little sweetness that might be happening. I don't want to waste it, so I'm going slowly. Can't waste the good stuff. And we continue. We will continue to fill all and then enjoy them. We are at the end of the road. I think it's time for all of us to just dig in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of them. And I'm going to cut it so that you can see the insides. I don't want to just bite in and then, you know, you're wondering, oh gosh, is it tasting as good as she's making it seem? And I'll do myself the honor and yours and take a bite. Mm-hmm. I did tell you all about texture the last time. The coconuts on top, give it that nice little crunch. At least it should be a layered thing. You're supposed to get different textures. The cream is creamy, the coconuts are crunchy, the puff is just between that 
not too soft. It's just right. It's just right. Mm. Folks, just put on the apron, do yourself a favor, and just jump in and make this eclair. Have friends over, have some tea, enjoy yourself. It is absolutely delicious. The cocoa bitters did exactly what I wanted it to do. It took away the little egginess, it infused, it enhanced. It was just beautiful. I'm very pleased with how this turned out, and you will be too when it is you decide to try it on your own. So I'd like to take this time to thank Angostura for making this possible, and I'll see you at the next one.